Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to be talking about levels of prevention in public health. First off, let us define prevention. Prevention can be defined as actions aimed at eradicating, eliminating or minimizing the impact of disease and disability. The concept of prevention is best defined in the context of levels, traditionally called primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary prevention. What do these terms mean? Join me as we explore these four levels of prevention in this video. Firstly, Primordial Prevention Primordial Prevention seeks to prevent disease at a very early stage, often before risk factors is present in a particular disease context. The aim of Primordial Prevention is to prevent the activities which encourage the emergence of lifestyles, behaviors and exposure patterns that contribute to increased risks of disease. For example, a child seeing their parents smoke cigarettes may wrongly consider this a good lifestyle choice for later in life. Advising parents to quit smoking in such circumstances can be considered primordial prevention. Next we have primary prevention. Primary prevention aims to prevent disease or injury before it ever occurs. This is done by preventing exposures to hazard that cause disease or injury and increasing resistance to disease or injury should exposure occur. Examples include legislation and enforcement to ban or control the use of hazardous products such as tobacco or mandate safe and healthy practices such as the use of seat belts and bike helmets, education about healthy and safe habits, for example, eating well and exercising regularly and immunization against infectious diseases. Thirdly, we have secondary prevention. Secondary prevention aims to reduce the impact of a disease or injury that has occurred already. This is done by detecting and treating disease or injury as soon as possible to halt or slow its progression, encouraging personal strategies to prevent re-injury or reoccurrence, and implementing programs to return people to their original health and functioning to prevent long-term problems. Examples of secondary prevention include regular exams and screening tests to detect disease in its earliest stages, for example, mammogram to detect breast cancer. Also, low-dose aspirin or diet and exercise programs to prevent further heart attacks or strokes. And suitably modified workplaces so injured or ill workers can return safely to their jobs. Fourthly, we have tertiary prevention. Tertiary prevention aims to soften the impact of an ongoing illness or injury that has lasting effects. This is done by helping people manage long-term, often complex health problems and injury, for example chronic diseases and permanent impairment, in order to improve as much as possible their ability to function, their quality of life and their life expectancy. Examples of tertiary prevention include cardiac or stroke rehabilitation programs, chronic disease management programs, for example diabetes, arthritis and depression, vocational rehabilitation programs to retain workers for new jobs when they have recovered as much as possible. Consequently, for many health problems, a combination of primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary interventions are needed to achieve a meaningful degree of prevention and protection. In summary, remember that prevention includes a wide range of activities known as interventions aimed at reducing risks or threats to health. Primordial prevention eliminates the existence of risk factors for disease occurrence, while primary prevention activities aim to actually stop disease from happening when the risk exists. However, secondary prevention activities stop the illness from getting worse. Meanwhile, tertiary prevention manages disability and limits deaths from the illness. Subscribe to this channel for more learning videos. Please give this video a like if it was valuable and leave any comments or questions below.